I thank the organizers of the one to one for uh, for inviting us to uh, to do the show. Um, there we go. Uh, I will be making some forward-looking statements and uh, and aspirational statements, and they should really be treated as such as I uh, as I move through the presentation. Okay, uh, Southern Silver. Uh, we are a group of experienced mine finders with a longevity in Mexico. Uh, we're advancing a project um, through the advanced exploration stage and uh, towards a uh, preliminary economic assessment that we hope to have completed in, uh, in 2020. Uh, we have a JV partner in the project, the Electrum Global Holdings, and we're uh, focused on establishing our Cerro Las Manitas project in Durango, Mexico, as one of the premier polymetallic projects in Mexico. Uh, we have a recently updated mineral resource on the project that uh, totals about 24 million tons, 272 million silver equivalent ounces that breaks out into uh, about 50-50 indicated and inferred resources, and uh, metal deportment of 85 million silver ounces and 2.2 billion pounds of combined lead and zinc. Uh, we are focused both on um, moving the project through to uh, preliminary economic assessment, but also on resource growth. And uh, we have a target of moving the project from 272 million silver equivalent ounces up to 350 um, uh, million uh, uh, silver equivalent ounces uh, in the very near future over the next 12 to 18 months. Our current ca cash discovery costs are uh, seven cents an ounce silver equivalent, and in zinc equivalent terms, half a penny a pound. So uh, organic growth through exploration is still a very good model for us as we continue to advance the project. There's a little bit of corporate information, uh, main things to, to focus on, shares outstanding, 130 million, uh, management and associates have about 10% of the float. Uh, Electrum Global Holdings is, uh, is both a partner in the project, but also a major shareholder in the company, and they have 33% uh, of, uh, uh, of the issued and outstanding shares. Uh, Southern Silver has two projects, but the main one we're going to focus on here is the Cerro Las Manitas project in uh, Durango, Mexico. Uh, it's in the heart of the Faja de Plata in, uh, in, southern, uh, in southern Durango. Uh, the property is 100% owned by the joint venture. There are no royalties on the, uh, on the project. And since 2011, we've, uh, we've managed to put um, $18.5 million into the ground as we continu continue to advance the project. Uh, we have, as I've stated, the next resource milestone at uh, 350 million silver equivalent ounces, and we are in the process currently of uh, doing engineering and metallurgical studies that will continue to de-risk the project as we move towards an economic assessment. People involved with the project, uh, what we see is a, a series of experienced mine finders that have been involved with over a dozen different major discoveries and mining operations throughout the world. Uh, it's a group that has a, a, a tremendous success and longevity in Mexico itself. Uh, with people that have been involved with the discovery and development of, of uh, deposits like Peñasquito, Los Gatos, uh, San Nicolas in Mexico. Uh, we've been in Mexico for quite a while and we know how to operate in here and we continue to do so. Uh, we, uh, Southern Silver, picked up the project in late 2010, started uh, exploring in 2011. In that time, we've put $18.5 million into the ground. We've had uh, three different resource updates. We, as I say, we're in the advanced exploration stage, moving towards economic assessment, and we've built the resource systematically since 2016 from 110 million silver equivalent ounces uh, to just over 200 and now 272 million silver equivalent uh, silver equivalent ounces and continue uh, continue to grow it's a strong metal mix uh, just under 50 percent of the resource uh, is is zinc with uh, just over 30 percent uh, in silver and then lead copper and gold uh, you know the outlooks I probably don't have to tell you but the outlooks for these metals uh, continues to remain strong <coughs> excuse me um, in um, the coming year and, uh, and, and for um, the near future as well. 
And just a little bit more on the project, located in Durango, we're just 70 kilometers outside of uh, Durango, the, the city of Durango, on the highway to Torreon, which runs right through the, uh, the property. There's a very safe jurisdiction. We're out in the middle of the bean fields, not the marijuana fields. We're on the edge of the Altiplano. It's a very easy access into the project. You can literally get to the, uh, get to the project in taxi cab. Uh, we've uh, continued to uh, move our social license initiatives in terms of our exploration access agreements with the HEDO, our permits with the government are in place. Uh, we've secured surface rights on portions of the property to, uh, to allow uh, mine construction. And uh, as we continue to move the project forward, we've completed 133 drill holes, uh, just under 60,000 meters of, uh, of drilling on the project. And again, cash discovery cost of our ounces are uh, seven cents an ounce silver equivalent. Uh, we're in a very good neighborhood. This is Southern Silver's project here in yellow. Uh, we're bound uh, by major players on all sides. We have Hecla on our east, uh, Core Mining on, uh, on our west. Um, there's uh, uh, Fresnio, it uh, forms on our northern boundary. Avino's Gold Silver uh, Mine is uh, sitting just a few kilometers off our northern boundary and a little bit further afield, uh, Argonaut Gold is in operation um, in, in, in the same district. So this is really a mature region, mature mining district, and uh, we have an excellent property position within it as we continue to advance the project forward. This is a photo of uh, uh, Cerro Las Manitas, the Hill of Little Mines. Uh, you can see a number of the old buildings and workings on the, uh, on the project. Uh, the, this uh, area has been mined on small scale for decades. Uh, and uh, what we're looking at doing is identifying the mineralization that connects all these little mines and turning it into one big mine. Uh, you can see the surface projections of uh, Four of the mineral deposits that we've identified currently on the project, uh, the main one being the Scarn Front, which skies out in this area, and then we have the Blind El Sol and Las Victoria zones, uh, which form sub-parallel zones uh, in, in this area. Uh, here we have also other targets where we look towards resource expansion on our target of increasing the resource towards that 350 million silver equivalent uh, target in the south scarn of the Mina La Bacona. And in the picture you see in the foreground is the four-lane autopista that runs right through the, uh, right through the property and there's one of the typical bean fields that, uh, that surround our, our project. <coughs> My only geology slide. Uh, here we have a central intrusion axis, the heat pump for the system, zone of alteration around it with all the historic workings around here. So that would be similar to the intrusive neck, zone of alteration around it, and then the historic mines. We identified our first target off to the west of the, uh, of the main cerro, and through, uh, through our drilling we're able to identify uh, this surface projection of the, uh, of, of the uh, deposit uh, sitting, uh, sitting in here. Uh, so the main deposit that we have here is the Scarnfront deposit. It, um, it, it uh, contains over 200 million of the 270 million uh, silver equivalent ounces on the project. And then uh, we've got a structural zone which uh, focuses um, a dike swarm that help focus the um, mineralization in the Blind El Sol and Las Victoria zones in there. This is a breakdown of the mineral resources and so note we've got just under uh, 24 million tons, 18 million tons of that is the Scarn Front Zone. I'd also draw attention to the average grade of the Scarn Front Zone, so it is, uh, is some of the higher grade mineralization within the, uh, uh, within the deposits that, uh, that we currently know, and it is the current focus of our resource expansion as we uh, continue to our next exploration target. This is uh, the block model of the Scarn Front Zone, you can see good continuity of the higher grade mineralization in the red and the, uh, and the magenta here. Mineralization extends from near surface within tens of meters of surface down to, uh, down to a kilometer. And we actually start seeing a transition at, at, at depth into uh, more copper rich mineralization which may uh, be indicating a, a change from the silver lead zinc scarn down into a, a copper scarn at depth as, uh, as uh, one would continue exploration down there. And then in terms of our exploration targets, I've mentioned them before, uh, we see uh, potential as we extend uh, the known zone of mineralization to the southeast in the Las Victorias target, and then on the east 
in the, in the uh, South Scarn and the Mina La Bacona uh, areas. We already have about 25 drill holes into that eastern margin of the central intrusion. We have mineralized intercepts in there, and the plan is to continue offset drilling to build resources as we uh, continue with our uh, next resource projection. Uh, there is another component to the uh, to the property. This is the area of the Cerro that I uh, that I was just showing, about 10 kilometers away. We transition into a tertiary volcanic sequence, uh, which contains epithermal vein systems. We've identified some uh, silver mineralization and strongly anomalous arsenic and antimony uh, in structures in the northern part of the property, which are very similar to the signatures that you see in the Avino project, which is located just about five kilometers to the, uh, the northwest of where we're exploring. So there continues to be exploration potential on the property. We've uh, continued with our metallurgical test work. Lock cycle and variability test work is in progress, and that works towards a PEA that we're soon to complete. Thank you very much. <laughs>